the fall. For now, though, speaking of Google, the other big news this week. Actually, there's been a lot of big news. There's been not a lot of big news. No, we're covered even, on the show. I feel like I've barely covered it. Like I, I just I wanted to really route the the, the Disney deal. Uh, yeah. Between ESPN and the NFL, which I thought was really really interesting, but I'm like I'm you know I'm having to make some choices here about like um uh, you know stuff that that's going on because there's Trump's talking about Intel. We yep. have like we mentioned GPT five. I haven't written about the open source, uh, open AI stuff. Yeah, it, for in August, it's been it suddenly was like, what's going on here? We're we're very busy. <laughs> exactly. Well, one of the stories was Google and Genie three. So Google DeepMind on Twitter, they said, what if you could only what if you could not only watch a generated video but explore it too? Genie three is our ground our, is our groundbreaking world model that creates interactive playable environments from a single text prompt. So what came to mind as you watched some of the Genie 3 demo videos this week? Because the internet went crazy. I watched the the main video and it looks unbelievable. But as a technologist uh, who predicted a version of this a no, couple so you're years ago. To the answer. I don't really want to answer this question because it's very <laughs> selfish. I knew. Look, of course, I was take your victory, victory lap. lap. Yes. Yeah, you're being right. Points here. I'm gonna bestow the hearth on you live on the podcast what, on well, the podium. But it's being right and being wrong points, and the being wrong points are arguably more interesting. The being okay. right points is when Dolly Two came out. I wrote an article saying this is this is how the metaverse is going to work, and this is when you go back and look at the the, the pictures in that article. They're so crappy. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. it's not impressive at all. This is well before ChatGPT, like six, seven months before. But it was, it suddenly just dawned on me because I've been writing a lot about video games. Um, and I think the video game industry is so, one of my all time favorite articles is called Consoles and Competition that trace the evolution of consoles and their points of differentiation, where it used to be it was all about performance. And then you hit a you basically when things went to HD, the cost of asset creation outweighed the, the cost of like building the game. And you had this like leveling that happened where suddenly yeah. it was so much more made so much more sense to get leverage on your cost to be on all platforms. That was the Xbox's best generation was the eight, the first HD generation. They got all the games and and then you had. And so Sony responded by getting exclusives. And so it's like, well. Sony has these games and then all the like Maddens and whatever on all the platforms. So then Sony sort of dominated through, through that regard. But the, the, the point in that, the key thing in that process was this explosion in the cost of asset creation. And that was clear. You go to a metaverse type of experience where it's 3d. It's like, look, we could barely survive like putting on a TV. And it, as it is, the game industry is still struggling. Like and mm -hmm. the costs are just so overwhelming to, to, to do all this. And it's like generally like zero marginal cost content. Now it is like, does, does genie three cost zero? No, no, of course not. I can't imagine how astronomically expensive it is to pull this off. Like the huge context, they need to do this, like all the compute, but the trend is obviously this is where it is going. The way the metaverse will happen is you're not going to have people crafting by hand or whatever might be all these detailed environments. You're going to be generating environments on demand and and that and you're going to get these amazing sort of experiences that are that generative AI is going to be the key to the metaverse. Basically it was mm -hmm. the long and short of it. The being wrong points was I'm like, look, we can do video now or sorry, we can do images now video's obviously coming i'm like but it's gonna take a few years right <laughs> like five months later people were generating video right and now the video generation especially that google's doing is like getting better and better here we are three years on they're actually doing it they're creating environments on demand that are responsive that are keeping context of like what happened like the painting demos insane where they're painting the blue thing mm -hmm. and they go away and they come back it's still there it, it's hard to explain what how unbelievable that is to maintain that level of context from something that happened multiple seconds before in the video and to come back and it's still there in the generatives. But, but the fact what we see when we're going to be able to experience that in a headset is still a long ways away. I'm not going to put a date on it because I've been so clearly wrong. Well, before. put a date on it no, and then we'll the get point. there like 300% faster than no, whatever you predict. Point. That's the point. Even though it feels so far away and I'm sure it is far away, 
we've mm-hmm. gotten to this point way faster than I thought three years ago. And I think I was way ahead of the curve to even see that this was coming. So yeah. the whole point, and this ties into the whole risk for Apple and Amazon. It's like, we keep talking about the short, medium, long-term and are we fully internalizing how insanely fast this stuff is moving? And yeah. like, it's going really fast. And this is mind blowing that it exists. And in a year, we're going to look back and we're going to be on like Genie 12. It's like, oh, look at how cute those Genie 3 <laughs> videos were. Totally. I mean, it's funny because with Apple, what it, the date that's always in my mind is 2035. But God only knows where we'll be in 2029, 2030. Like the pace is insane on basically every AI adjacent front here. Well, and I think and, part of it is like you go back to like from 2025 to to 2015. Mm-hmm. Like 2015 to 2022, not much happened. Like, yeah, really. And so I think there is a bit where all of us got sort of lulled into a sense of complacency because stuff didn't really change that much for quite a while and tech got pretty boring and all the, these companies were dominant and they had their spots and was there improvements happening? Yes, there were. Uh, but even like the gaming stuff, like graphics in 2015 were pretty amazing. They were better in 2022, but like, was it that much more meaningful like you mm-hmm. got the ray tracing or something like that it's like wow the light glimmering on the water is so incredible it's like <laughs> does that really like impact like my experience and, and it's almost like we have to reacclimate ourselves to the feeling that we had in the 80s like, yeah where it was just unbelievable how much better things were year over year and you think about the leadership of like an apple all these 60 year olds or 70 year olds it's like can they internalize this? Do they realize how fast this is going? I mean, I don't know that any of us can really internalize how many things are changing and how impressive it's all getting. I'm not a gamer per se. I mean, I've played video games and I was hopelessly addicted to FIFA, but what you're describing there does track with my experience where it felt like the graphics in video games got so good that they really couldn't get all that much better for about 10 years right. there. They were getting better, but there's stuff that you just didn't notice as much. Cause like, it's like when you went from like regular TV to H to, to flat screen TVs. Yeah. Like now the difference between like 1080 and 4k is really apparent when you're looking for it. But a lot of the time, it's it's can't compare to the jump from standard TV to HDTV. <laughs> right, exactly. There's no, like, mind-blowing, oh, my God, I can't believe they were able to do this. Whereas you watch the Genie 3 video, and within, like, 15 seconds, you're like, oh, my God, how is this real? Um, and, I mean, there are boring questions, like, when will this technology be made available to the public? Because with Google... Even in just the past few years, there have been several incredible demos. And then like half the time, it seems like the features just sort of disappear into the ether. But it's yeah, amazing but like, that they can do this. make it out, right? Yeah. Like, like, there, there are AI-generated videos uh, floating around the web fooling people right now. So it, the, the, even Google can ship eventually. Well, and when they do ship, I wonder like what the product looks like here. How would something like this make money? What would it be used for? I don't know. Those are all the secondary questions that emerged as I was watching this. I mean, obviously, video games in the future, when Charles is playing video games in like 10 years, they're going to be completely mind-blowing. And I'm very jealous of the gamers that are going to get to experience this stuff. But beyond that, I kind of wonder what sort of business opportunities might emerge as this technology becomes more ubiquitous and uh cheaper to operate because i also reacted to that video being like i can't even imagine how expensive this would be to release at scale oh impossible almost yeah certainly. these are very hand-picked videos right like the but the 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 one thing you should never bet against in technology is stuff getting cheaper over time mm-hmm. <laughs> like that that's the one thing that happens and just a, like, this is where this stuff and like the vo stuff is where this is why meta clearly needed a reset and it still kind of blows my mind when i interviewed zuckerberg like i had to remind him that like generally i would be really useful for the metaverse like like just <laughs> right. the um yeah i mean this is where like 
Google just makes like again. I'm becoming a Google fanboy. It's like they they, they just like who cares? Like because that's the whole thing. They just make cool stuff for cool no, stuff's and sake. To your to your son's point, who knows what stuff's gonna look like in ten years, right? Like if yeah. you have to have the business model today, then you're not gonna make anything because you don't know what it's gonna end up being. And mm-hmm. um, you know, you know what? You know what else I have to say? As long as I'm here, great. Department of Justice, leave Google alone. Let them harvest <laughs> all the search money. They Let want. this perfect little trillion no, dollar it's band kind of, of like weirdos. The Bell Labs thing, right? Did, yeah. did it benefit anyone for the end of Bell Labs? Like all the stuff they made was under a monopoly. I'm mm. becoming full blown anti anti monopolist. Like, oh, it, like, breaking news here on the podcast. The listeners no, haven't like, noticed over the last two and a half years. Let Google abuse their search monopoly as much as they want to. As Humanity long as they keep making unbelievable stuff like this. Right. Um, I don't, I don't know if the Genie 3 demo was quite as impressive or quite impressive enough for me to just let all my Google hand ringing go. But I'm mostly with you and I can't wait to see what sort of use cases emerge as that technology becomes more and even a lot of available. Google's dumbest stuff is like responding to like regulatory pressure or like media pressure, right? Like the whole mm. debacle with like the, 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 their picture generation, all that sort of thing. That's all downstream of like people complaining that when you search for CEO and Google images, it showed mostly men. Mm. Like, Leave the leave them alone. Just let them do stuff. Was okay? it was it downstream of actual Google employees? I don't know. Um, but I had totally forgotten about that controversy until like uh it, for for the last year and a half here, which says a lot let about Google. Google, Google, Google has cook. recovered. I mean, look, That's remember right. they were ro- rolling out Bard for a little while. Like oh, it was man. a real mess, and they've found their footing in this new era. So congrats to them, and I look forward to more generative generative video uh as we fought it for so long andrew i i I, I just fought you know let google cook you uh, (laughs) the google bull has finally emerged after 12 years i love to see